If I was to ask what the greatest toy ever is, I'm pretty sure I can guess what your reaction would be. It could either be Lego or wrong. That was a great segue into me talking about Lego Racers, which has a gigantic box. So gigantic, in fact, that if I compare it to Alone in the Dark, we can see that it is significantly wider, significantly taller, and significantly deeper. Why is it so big? Let's find out. On the front we have a fantastic embossed effect. You can probably see that actually because of the light. Uh, we've got this embossed artwork, and we always love a bit of embossing. So what else we always love? Gatefold. Oh yeah, we'll look that closely in a minute. Let's have a look at the front. It's got some stunning artwork actually. It's very nice to compose and the colours are just brilliant. Um, Lego racers. Nice. Speed through Lego worlds in your own constructible Lego car. A 100% satisfaction guaranteed, or your money back. That is a bold claim. And, as ever, ages 6 to 99. I'm trying to remember all the people who are, like, over 100 years old, and I can't remember any of the names. One of them's Japanese, isn't he? Um, and, yeah, this is, this is quite a crazy world we're racing through here. All of which I'm pretty sure actually appears in the game, which is quite good. Um, it's it's nice when uh, games do that. Only thing is this uh, start thing, <laughs> it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of like something from, oh, what's his name now? MC Escher. It's sort of pointing the wrong way. But other than that, it's great. And look, you've got all these little Lego races in the background there, as well as the two at the front. We've got um, Gypsy Moth from the UFO, not the UFO, uh, Insectoids theme from the mid 90s and we've got Rocket Racer who was never a minifigure officially but he's a pretty cool dude and I think they should have made him a mini, uh, minifigure then they could have sold some nice promotional items for this game but they didn't think of that did they? Also got the cool UFO which I had when I was little and I don't know where it is now so I had to buy, buy another one it was on the cheap um, it's on a CD-ROM would you believe and it's a game as opposed to a constructive like um, Lego Loco was on the side, again, game, Lego Racers. Other side pretty much has the same things except with system requirements. And it requires DirectX 6.1. Incredible. On the back, we've got some crazy stuff going on. What have we got? This is the first racing game. Sorry, tripod's in the way. I can't really zoom in on that. This is the first racing game that challenges you to put both your driving and building skills to the test. First, you get the chance to build yourself a car, or choose one of the pre-built models. Who does that? Not me. <clears throat> then you get to race it through exciting LEGO world, battling against history's greatest ever racing champions. Good luck. What? History's greatest ever racing champions. What's that supposed to mean? These, all the races in this are LEGO characters. They're not hardly history's greatest racers, are they? You don't get to race against um, Jensen Button and friends, do you? I'm trying to think of other great races, and I cannot, because I'm not really big on racing, but whatever. Um, I just like the cars. So, you can build a driver. Create and customise your Lego driver and driving licence. Because, yeah, driving licence is the most fun part of this game. Ooh, build your car from scratch using real Lego bricks. Yeah, real Lego bricks. You get the bricks sent to your door to build your car with. Or select one of the pre designed models. Again, that's a bit of a boring way to do it. I'm not sure whether the uh, building of the uh, car actually affects the car's performance. <coughs> if what I've seen mentioned on online is true, then it does, but uh, I've never really seen any evidence of that in the game itself. So I may be wrong. Speed! Speed through 12 different tracks in four LEGO worlds. <coughs> That's not quite true. There's more LEGO worlds than that. They're actually underselling their own game. That's rare. Race against up to five other opponents or challenge a friend in split-screen mode. And then you've got to win. Defeat the greatest LEGO... Ah, now you've clarified the greatest LEGO racing champions in history. Actually, if the original characters didn't actually race. They would just... They did their own thing. Like, Captain Redbeard didn't have a car, did he? Um, then win the final challenge, a race against the Rocket Racer. No, he's actually just called Rocket Racer, that's his name. 
Mr. R. Racer. <sighs> kids tested, kids approved. Oh yeah. And here is a bizarre scene where Rocket Racer is shown getting defeated by two people because he's in the pit stop messing about um, and the other racers are actually still racing. So the old Rocket Racer. But he doesn't seem too phased by it. Look at him, he looks very chuffed. Lego Media! I always quite like that logo. It uh, makes good use of negative space. Uh, customer service, if you want to ring them, there's the number. And if you want to fax them, there's the number. <laughs> uh, what have we got here? An exciting range of games based in LEGO worlds, offering unlimited hours of fun and play. Mm, not strictly true, but if you're a kid then perhaps. But yeah, unlimited, that's not quite the case. Oh yeah, it's time for the slipcase. Um, gatefold thingy. <laughs> Showing all the uh, major races in the game. Kind of badly rendered, I would have said. In fact, Rocket Race is the best looking one, and he's the only one who isn't a real minifigure. You th what? Why didn't they use the actual minifigures for this? That would have been a lot better. Perhaps um, done the photo up a bit to make it look more like a game. I don't know. Would have, it would have gone a lot better for them, I think. Despite that, it's uh, pretty high quality. It's just um, some of it's a bit wonky and doesn't, act, doesn't actually look like it does in the game either. The um, closest one they've got is Gypsy Moth, but uh, even then it's not quite perfect. So we've got in order Captain Redbeard. Jeez, uh, I can't remember his name. And Basil the Lord, That's him. Um, his name changes all the time, and I can't remember what they call it in this, but um, I know him as Sam Sinister. Or was it Sam Sanister? I, I recall it being Sam Sanister, but it seemed, it changes so often that like they, they couldn't work out what his name was. Uh, we've got King Kahuka, we've got Rocket Racer, Gypsy Moth, and Johnny Thunder, who is awesome. Basically, Indiana Jones, the Lego version. And it tells you the... F oh, right, I see. It's the, like... Oh, okay. So, they're kind of generalising when they say four different worlds. Because uh, what they really mean is... Oh, well, Adventurers, that's two different it's like series of Adventurers. Um, castle... Again, that's kind of two different disparate bits of castle. You've got the uh, classic castle range and you've got the Fright Nights range. I know way too much about Lego. Space, you've got Ice Planet 2000 and you've got... Um, what's it called? I think that's Insectoids, but it's also got bits of UFO in it as well. It's kind of a mix of quite a lot of the uh, space themes from the mid-90s, which of course is the best era of Lego. Um, and you've got the Pirates, and they're just pretty much Pirates. There's no real difference. In fact, um, oh, the missing one, um, the Islanders bit, which I believe was part of Pirates, uh, but they've not shown that track on this. Again, underselling their own game, which is uh, interesting. Another case of perhaps they didn't quite know what they had, but it's Lego, so they're usually pretty good with the packaging. Anyway, this is a slipcase, so we can take it off, revealing... The old Lego box. Move, ball. And inside the Lego box. Would you believe we have a game? But first, let's look at... Oh, God, that, didn't, that came away a bit easily, didn't it? This is second-hand, after all. Ooh. Let's get the goods out. I won't try pulling the green thing out this time, because I actually know that it's supposed to be part of the box. Two instruction manuals and a brochure. Let's have a look at the instructions first. Let's see if we can work out a difference between them. Right, so that one's in English. Then that one's in English. Huh. Okay, they must have just uh, had a spare instruction manual and thought, why not include it? Uh, good guy eBay seller. Yeah, I don't think we need to look, take a really close look at the instructions. It's just got pretty pictures and it's all in colour. And look, there's Rocket Racer being creepy. Uh, yeah, it's got all the pictures of the races in again. They really loved showing them off. Maybe it took them so long to make that they uh, wanted to make sure they uh, got every penny out of it. We've also got the brochure, which looks like it's going to be the same as the one in Lego Loco. Yeah, because look, we've got the Rock Raiders. I don't know, it looks a little bit different, actually. Uh, races, Friends, Rock Raiders. Um, creator. Like, oh no, this is quite a bit different actually. There's Lego Loco there, look. Oh yeah, and there's Lego Chess and Lego Lemon, so yeah, it's the same, pretty much. That's on there. 
And finally, we have, God, can I get it out? The disc itself with the uh, old Lego studs, which if you haven't seen them before, basically they just work like Lego. So you can put minifigures and bricks on them. That didn't sound very healthy. And inside we've got the disc. I have multiple copies of this. Why do I have two copies of this? I'm sure this was in my uh, CD case, but uh, perhaps not. And we've got a little thingy that says games. Nothing on the backs because uh, we've got all the back stuff on the box itself. And there we go. That is Lego Racers. Pretty similar to Lego Loco. Do have one other Lego game in my collection thus far, though I would. Uh, quite like to get rock raiders and chess and create in fact I want them all give me them all anyway that's enough on Lego races